Okay, so our topic for this video is going to be two different types of probability, experimental and theoretical probability. Um, our central question here is going to be how is probability of an experimental or a theoretical event calculated? Uh, to get us started here, we're going to talk about what these different terms mean. Um, probability is the chance that an event occurs. Uh, it is written as a reduced fraction or 8%. Um, and then our two different types of probability that we're going to be looking at here, theoretical and experimental. Theoretical probability is the likelihood of an event to occur. The event has not happened yet. I'm going to underline that. That's going to be one of the key differences here. Um, and then experimental probability is the probability of an event occurring based on data or an experiment. Um, it is based on something that has actually occurred. Um, so that's kind of the the key difference here. So let me underline based on data or an experiment here. Now, in either chance or in either way um, to find the probability of something, to actually calculate it, it says uh, the probability of an event A to occur can be calculated using the following equation. Um, P of A, which means probability of event A occurring, is equal to the number of ways that A can occur divided by the total number of possible outcomes. So we kind of want to find out uh, the number of ways that the, the thing can happen, that we want to happen, and then divide it by the total number of ways that it can actually happen. So to get us started here, uh, for example one here, it says, uh, just determine if the following situations are asking for theoretical or experimental probability. So we're just going to say theoretical or experimental. We're not actually going to calculate anything here. So um, the first one here, A, says, uh, what's the probability of rolling a number cube and getting a five? So notice that this one's just asking about what's the probability of this thing happening. Um, in a case like that, that is theoretical because this event has not occurred yet. For B, it says you flip a coin 20 times and get heads 12 times, tails eight times. What's the probability of flipping heads based on the results? Um, that is certainly um, experimental because it is based off of data, right? We actually did this thing, and now we're looking at the results and using that to help predict the future. Um, C says you observe 10 cars driving past your house. Three are black, five are white, and there was one of each of red and blue. Uh, what's the probability of the next car being white? So once again, this is based off of some observations, based off some data. Um, and so for that reason, this is going to be experimental. Uh, and then lastly, it says, what's the probability of a randomly chosen number being even? Um, so this is not based off of any data. This is just the probability of something happening, right? So this is strictly a theoretical situation, a theoretical event. So if we're basing it off of something that has happened, some actual data, an experiment, it's experimental. If we're just considering some sort of uh, possible situation, then that's going to be theoretical. All right, so let's dive into some actual questions here. So example two says, uh, the following table records the results of asking 50 students about their favorite ice cream flavor. Um, we've got this nice table here. We can see the flavors over on the left vanilla, chocolate, or other. And then um, we can see the number of students that have answered that on the right with the 18, 25, and 7. Um, so A here says, what's the probability of a student's um, favorite flavor being vanilla? Um, so let's see here. Vanilla, there were 18 people that chose uh, vanilla. And then it was out of 50, right? There were 50 total people asked. Um, 18 over 50. Let's uh, simplify that down. Let's see here. 18 over 50 is do, 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 9 over 25. So I'm going to say 9 over 25, or as a percent, that is 36%. So Sometimes you want it as a reduced fraction. Sometimes you might want to get it as a percent. Um, 9 over 25 is 0.36. And of course, that as 
Let me just write that down there as well. That as a percent is 36%. Um, what's the probability of a student favoring anything other than vanilla? So I forgot to write P of V. That would be probability of vanilla. Um, so if I'm trying to find out the probability of a student favoring anything other than vanilla, that means that I would want to find the probability of chocolate and other, right? So chocolate and other would be these two. So that would be 25 plus seven over 50. Now 25 plus seven is 32 over 50. Now let me see what that simplifies down to. That would be 0.64 or 16 over 25. 0.64 or 64%. Okay, so we're just using the data and we're putting the number of ways that we want on top and the total number of ways on the bottom. Um, is this situation theoretical or experimental? This is certainly experimental, right? We're basing it off of some data. We're basing it off of an actual experiment. We're basing it off of something that has happened. All right. Um, let's see here. Example three. Um, a student is playing a board game and it needs to roll a four or greater to win the game. Um, what is the probability of rolling a four with a normal dice? So P of four, um, how many fours are there on a dice? Well, there's only one four on a dice. So one is on top. And what's, uh, how many different sides are there on a regular dice? There are six. So one out of six would be our simplified fraction because that can't reduce it all. And one out of six, as a decimal would be 0.17 if I round it to the nearest hundredth, which would be 17%. Now, what's the probability of rolling a five or six? This would actually win us the game, right? We wanted a, um, well, I guess it said four or greater. So that would work or this five or six would work. So um, probability of five or six. Um, how many fives and how many sixes are there? There's one five, there's one six. So that would be two out of the six options uh, would be a five or a six. That would simplify down to one over three, which would be 0.33 or 33%. Now, is this situation theoretical or experimental? This is definitely theoretical because we haven't actually rolled that dice yet. We're just considering uh, what's, the, what's the likelihood of, of us rolling this four, five, or six. Um, K, 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 what do we have next here? Uh, we got Aiden, he's randomly deciding between five shirts to wear today. He has two red shirts, two black shirts, and one white shirt. Uh, what's the probability of Aiden picking a black shirt? So probability of black. Now, how many black shirts does he have? He has two black shirts. And how many total shirts does he have? Well, he's got two red, two black, and one white. So that's five total. Oh, and it said that up at the top. I just completely blanked on that. So there's five total shirts. So two out of five, uh, that can't simplify. That would be our reduced fraction version. Two out of five is 0.4, which would be 40%. So two out of five or 40%. Now what's the probability of him not selecting a red shirt? Not selecting a red shirt. So if we're not selecting a red shirt, what are our other options? It would either need to be black or white. So how many black shirts are there? There's two, how many white shirts? There's one. So there's three options that we like, five total options. So three out of five. 
And what is that? That is 0 0.6, which would be 60%. Now, is this situation theoretical or experimental? This is theoretical because we haven't done anything yet, right? We're just kind of considering what's, what's likely to happen. Um, we don't have any data. Um, last one here, example five. It says the following table records the results of observing the color of pants of 100 people in a mall. Um, looks like we got a lot of different color pants. We got blue, black, gray, brown, and white, and we have the number of people spotted wearing those colors. Um, and what are we dealing with here? So A says, what's the probability of someone wearing black pants? Okay, well, there seems to be 27 people with black pants, and it mentioned that we have 100 total people. Um, 27 over 100, that cannot reduce. Oh, let me write my actual little equation. Don't want to forget that. So this would be P of B. Uh, I guess I'll do B, uh, L, K. <laughs> uh, just abbreviation of black. I can't do BL because it's blue, but we'll just say that. And that was 27 over 100 which can't reduce, and that would be 27%. Um, what's the probability of someone wearing a color other than blue or black? Other than blue or black, that would need to be these ones. So this is the probability of gray or brown or white which would be 20 plus 11 plus 9 all over 100. 20 plus 11 plus 9 is 40, which would simplify down to, what would that be? 4 out of 10, which would be 2 over 5. And 2 over 5 is 0.4, which would be 40%. And this says, uh, based on the results, how many people would be expected to be wearing blue pants if 500 people were observed? This is an interesting question. So if they're asking us um, to kind of extrapolate the data to see what would happen if there's more people that we ran this experiment with, just what's the probability of these people wearing blue pants, right? So probability of blue was 33 out of 100. So what we'll do now is we'll take that 33 over 100 and we will multiply it by the new total that we're kind of um, thinking about. So 33 out of 100 times 500, that would be 165. So based on the data, if we continued to observe people until we observed 500 people, we would expect to have 165 people wearing blue pants. And is this situation theoretical or experimental probability? This is experimental, right? We are basing it off of some data. Okay, so with that in mind, it's your turn to try some stuff. Um, you're going to be looking at the your turn over here. You've got um, a nice little table there. And then you've got some, you got some, a lot of questions here. So give these a shot. Uh, make sure you're paying attention to the questions asking about experimental or theoretical. And then come back to see how you did when you are done. Okay, so uh, we got this nice table here recording the results of rolling a dice 60 times. Um, and it starts off by what's the probability of rolling a six? Well, based on the data, we rolled a six 11 times out of 60 total. That was P of six. Um, so that would be the simplified version. That can't go down any. And as a decimal, that is 0.18, which would be about 18%. Uh, what's the probability of rolling an even number? Now, even numbers, we've got 7, 
three, eleven. So I'm just looking at the twos, fours, and sixes. So probability of even. I'm looking at seven plus three is 10, plus 11 is 21 out of 60, which would simplify down to, let's see here, 21 out of 60 is uh, seven out of 20. So seven out of 20 would be the simplified version. And that would be 35% as a percentage. Now, is this theoretical or experimental? That was experimental because we were basing it off of the data. Now, based on the results, how many times would a four be rolled if the dice was rolled 200 times? So based on the data, P of four was only three out of 60. So if I take that three out of 60 and multiply it by 200, let's see what happens here. Man, that's only gonna be 10. I would only expect to roll that four 10 times if I rolled the whole thing 200 times. That certainly seems like not a lot. Looks like our data did not roll a four very frequently. Um, now we got some theoretical questions down here. It says theoretically, what's the probability of rolling a number greater than two? So not based on the data, but theoretically. Now, if I want a number greater than two, that means I need a three, a four, a five, or a six, right? Three, four, five, or six are the numbers greater than two. So that's four different numbers that are greater than two. That's four out of six. Simplify, that's two out of three. And that would be roughly 67%, 66.6%. I'm gonna round it to 67. And then theoretically, what's the probability of rolling an odd number? Well, how many odd numbers are there on a dice? There is uh, a, a one, a three, and a five. So that's three different odd numbers out of six. That simplifies down to one out of two, which would be 50%. All right, so hopefully that went well for y'all. And uh, that will wrap up our notes on experimental and theoretical probability.